which is, what is this? I'll just put this here. Okay, I've heard this called like eight different things. Is something bad going to happen if I use a bronzer brush for blush? It says bronzer on it. Hello, sunshines! Do you ever feel just a little overwhelmed with all the shapes and sizes and assortments of all the different makeup brushes? There's a lot out there, and maybe you just kind of don't know where to begin. It's okay, because I have so been there. And so today, I'm gonna give you a crash course in which brushes do what, so that you never have to feel overwhelmed again. First off, I want you to take a deep breath and repeat after me. If it works for that, then you can use it for that. I know, it's crazy, right? When I was new to cosmetics, I was so concerned with which brush did what, and I was so afraid that I was going to do the wrong thing and someone was going to expose me as a fraud and call me out on not being a real makeup artist. So, aside from wishing that I could tell my 16-year-old self to chill out a little bit, because the old ladies at the Little Merle Norman shop where I spent my first two years in cosmetics we're so not going to come after me for having them use a concealer brush for their eyeshadow. So at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what it says on the side of the brush. All that really matters is that there are a few specific shapes that are made for different tasks because that shape makes that task a little bit easier. And knowing what these are and what they're recommended for, which I will get into in just one second, will allow you to make an informed decision about what brushes you like. And if you find that you like a different tool better than what I might be recommending, know that makeup is art and that means there are really no wrong answers. And that I wanna hear all about your unique tips for makeup applications. So you should most definitely put them in the comments. Now, before I get started on specific brushes, you should know that there is one other thing that makes a brush good for a specific task or not. And that is what the bristles are made of. Some brushes are made from natural hair. These are made from animal hair, usually squirrel, goat, or sable. And if you're wondering what that is, think a Russian squirrel. Now because natural hair has cuticles, which means the bristles are going to have a texture to them, it makes these brushes amazing for picking up powdery pigments along with your skin's natural oils and blending them really smoothly on the face. Now, because natural bristles move very freely and tend to spread out a little bit more, they're less likely to pick up too much pigment making them a great choice for blending. Now, a word of caution about natural bristle brushes. They're not good for creams or liquids. Natural hair is porous, so it's not only going to potentially waste your product by soaking it all up, it's also going to make your brush all gunky and clumpy and gross. Now the other type of brush is synthetic, so it's usually going to be made from some type of nylon or polyester fibers. Now these brushes are amazing for anything cream or liquid because they're non-porous and they will not absorb your product. The bristles also tend to pack tighter together, more than natural bristle brushes do. So they're going to give a more precision application with a better color payoff. Now, in my personal opinion, I prefer synthetic brushes because they are cruelty free and I feel like they tend to last longer. They stay soft for a very long time, whereas natural bristle brushes can start to feel scratchy as they age, especially if they're not being cared for properly. And while natural bristle brushes are slightly better for blending, and I do own quite a few of them, I feel like with a little bit of practice, you can get really good results with all synthetic brushes. Now, onto brush shapes and what the heck those things are for. And just an FYI, I'm mentioning quite a few different types of brushes here. So I'm gonna include timestamps down in the description. Feel free to skip ahead to the part that you're really looking for. I will not get my feelings hurt. Or watch the whole video for a crash course in Brushology. 
that's not a real thing. I'm going to start with basic silhouettes for face brushes. So for foundation brushes, what kind of brush you want to use is going to depend entirely on what kind of foundation formula you're using. Now the most common is probably gonna be this guy. This is your business as usual flat foundation brush made from synthetic fibers and made to apply creams and liquids. You are going to get a more full coverage application from this brush, but you do want to be careful not to apply too much product because it's not the best in the way of blending. It can be a little bit of work. And if you're not careful, you might get some streaky foundation going on. Now, for a lighter, more airbrushed application of creams and liquids, you can use what's called a stippling brush. These are typically gonna have dense natural fibers at the base and longer, more spread out synthetic fibers towards the top that actually do the application work. You will generally use this brush in sort of a stippling motion, as the name would suggest. Now, if you are using a powder foundation, a kabuki brush is what you wanna use. This is generally going to give you full coverage because the bristles are packed very closely together to pick up a lot of pigment. And depending on your foundation formula, you'll most likely use this brush in a buffing, circular motion. So, for concealer brushes, most of the time when you hear the word concealer brush, this is what's going to come to mind. And it's very much like a mini version of a flat foundation brush. These are also going to be made from synthetic fibers because most concealers are going to be creams or liquids and they're going to give you very, very full coverage. And some of them come really teeny tiny, like maybe like half of this and those are awesome for covering up little blemishes and being really precise with it and so that way you don't get this sort of overflow of concealer it's just exactly where you need it now airbrush concealer brushes have also surged in popularity in the last few years these are also generally going to be synthetic because they're made for concealer and they are just shaped like a very tiny very dense powder brush now these are not very precise, but they do allow you to gently buff in your product for a really smooth, line-free finish. And this is probably something that you're gonna use under your eye more so than for a specific blemish because it is a broader application area. Now for blush brushes, I'm gonna start with my favorite because I'm biased like that. Angled blush brushes are perfect for when you're looking for a diffused, more natural look. The shape of this brush works perfectly to apply along your cheekbones for a really beautiful flush without over powering your face. You can also use a domed shape brush to give you slightly more pigment than an angled brush without it going too crazy. Now I like to use a smaller version of my foundation stippling brush when I'm applying cream blushes. That way it saves my fingers from stains and gives a really pretty airbrushed finish. All right, bronzer and highlight. So for bronzer and contouring, I like to use a smaller natural bristled brush. This is going to allow me a lot of control and doesn't pick up too much product. And this one is small enough to pinch the top and get an even more precision application for smaller areas. It's also not uncommon to use a domed powder brush, which is going to give you a broader, softer application. Now, a lot of times I've found that this is what gets labeled as a bronzer brush. These are large, very, very densely packed natural bristle brushes, and they are going to pack on a lot of pigment. And I'm not personally a fan of these because I feel like they put on way too much product. Now for a soft, natural highlight, a fan brush is my go-to. You can just dust a little bit along your cheekbones and anywhere else that you want a soft, subtle highlight. These are also really great for sweeping away any shadow fallout you may have had because they aren't dense enough to press the pigment down and smear it across your face. All right, eye brushes. So to oversimplify things, there's basically two different types of eye brushes flat ones and round ones. Now your flat shadow brushes are for packing on pigment. I like the bigger fluffy ones 
for all over base shades and then I've got some smaller denser ones that are really great for being specific in certain areas. Now the round brushes, which may be called crease brushes, blending brushes, or ponytail brushes are basically just for blending it all out. And they are usually a little bit more pointed towards the tip to allow you to slightly diffuse the product as you are blending it. These are also great for contouring really tiny areas like around the nose. Now I also like to have a smudge brush on hand and this does exactly what you think it would. It's got really short dense bristles and it's just made to soften and blur lines. It's great for smoking out eyeliner and assisting with any smoky eyes. All right, now as far as liner brushes are concerned, you're usually gonna have two options, pointed, and angled. The pointed ones are great for super, super precise application, but the angled brushes are great for creating a winged eye with gel eyeliner because the shape of the brush actually helps just kind of make the wing for you. It makes it so much easier. Now, brow brushes are typically going to look like an angled liner brush with a spoolie on the end. This is a spoolie in case anybody did not know the technical term for what's basically a glorified mascara wand. Brow brushes are typically gonna be a lot more stiff than a liner brush so that they can really get into your brows and work the product in. Now lastly, and probably the most overlooked category is the lips. Lip brushes are usually either retractable or come with a replaceable lid. So that you can take them with you on the go and they allow you a much more precise application than using lipstick straight from the tube. So that is a very basic crash course in brushes and what goes on your face where and how. Now there are so many different companies out there making so many different types of brushes. There are probably brushes that I've never heard of. So this could never be an all-encompassing guide of every brush out there and exactly what it's supposed to do. But what it does do is give you a basic set of guidelines so that you don't ever have to feel overwhelmed at the makeup store when you're shopping for brushes. So now that you have a basic set of guidelines as far as what tools might be the most helpful for certain jobs, feel free to let me know if I've forgotten anything major or if there's some weird brush out there that you saw and you don't know what it does or how to use it, anything like that. Just let me know down in the comments. And if you are new to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe so that way you don't miss any of the videos coming out for you guys on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And feel free to share if you know of somebody that could use a little sunshine in their day.